for the first few days after a gunman killed 19 students and two teachers inside Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Officials told stories of the heroism of police at the scene. But as residents and journalists pushed for answers, that narrative fell apart. Tonight, the KVU defenders are deconstructing the origin of those false accounts and why three months after the shooting, experts say those accounts could have long-term consequences on public trust in policing. Here's senior reporter Tony Plohetsky. In the earliest hours after the Uvalde shooting, Everyone from officials at the scene that first night. It just shows the braveness, the heroism from these law enforcement officers that went in there. We know that if they weren't able to kill this suspect, there could have been more lives lost. To these Border Patrol tweets claiming agents put themselves between the shooter and the children. It could have been worse. To Governor Greg Abbott the next day. The reason it was not worse is because law enforcement officials did what they do. They showed amazing courage by running toward gunfire for the singular purpose of trying to save lives. Spawned a story of heroic police officers taking on the 18-year-old gunman inside Robb Elementary School. And it is a fact that because of their quick response, getting on the scene, being able to respond to the gunman and eliminate the gunman, they were able to save lives. A story that turned out to be wrong. In the rush of any crisis, it's not unusual for officials to sometimes give information that later needs to be corrected. And the public is often forgiving about those kinds of mistakes. But what happened in Uvalde in the hours and days after the shooting set out an entire account that hid the difficult truth about what happened to 19 children and two teachers. This photo, obtained by KVU News and the Austin American Statesman, is giving us a closer look at the police response that's been under so much scrutiny. Reporting by the KVU Defenders, first in this screen grab obtained three weeks after the shooting, deep in questions about the police response. It showed heavily armed officers in the hall minutes after the gunman went into a classroom. <laughs> Three weeks later, as Givaldi and state officials refused to release information, the defenders were the first to show this video of officers running toward the classroom when they first arrived, just as they are trained to do. <laughs> but they quickly retreated after taking gunfire and more than an hour passed before more local, state, and federal officers filled the hallway before finally breaching the classroom and killing the gunman. Outside the school that day, parents begged for police to do more. Hey, hey, we got guys going in to get kids, okay? This document, obtained from the Texas Rangers Robb Elementary School shooting file, makes clear that the story of police bravery is traced in part to local Uvalde officials. Sources say the one-page document, titled Narrative, was presented to the Texas Department of Public Safety a week after the shooting. An effort to cling to erroneous information even after the truth had begun emerging. It says, quote, the total number of persons saved by the heroes that are local law enforcement and the other assisting agencies is over 500 per UCISD. 40 minutes were not wasted, but each minute was used to save lives of children and teachers. It is not clear who wrote the document. Uvalde officials, including Mayor Don McLaughlin, declined through a spokeswoman to comment. Governor Abbott later offered this explanation for misspeaking. I was misled. I am livid about what happened. I was on this very stage two days ago, and I was telling the public information that had been told to me. 
In subsequent statements, Abbott said he got his information from multiple federal, state, and local law enforcement as part of a briefing. So I've testified before it was an abject failure. It violated all the principles that we've learned so much over the years. Just as we were finalizing our story, Texas DPS Director Steve McCraw agreed to his first extensive on-camera interview. He says his agency based information on heroism on what they were told by two local Uvalde officials he wouldn't name. It was anything but heroic, in the fact it was a, an absolute disaster. Others, including the Border Patrol, whose agents ultimately led a team that killed the shooter, have never offered any explanation about their statements. They did not respond to our request for comment. We all want to get in there, Javi. We all want to get in there. Trust me. When you start pronouncing that heroism takes place and then millions of people hear children being killed behind a door with a dozen officers doing nothing, how do you expect the American people not to feel the way that they do? Experts say erroneous accounts and high-profile cases further diminish public confidence in law enforcement. Cedric Alexander is a former law enforcement executive who served on President Obama's 21st Century Policing Task Force. Lesson learned here is that before we take off and start high-fiving and patting ourselves on the back, we need to understand what all the facts are. The misinformation can also confuse and anguish grieving families. KVU recently met the father of McKenna Elrod Seiler, whose daughter died that day at Robb Elementary. I love my dad because he always takes care of us, has stuff ready for us, and when I go to his house, he always makes my heart beat better. When someone's in danger and you hear the things that they heard, that you should run towards that, not away from it. All we want to know is the truth. What little accountability has come from the false statements is in a preliminary 77-page report by a Texas House committee, which DPS said relied solely on information provided by local law enforcement, which Abbott repeated. Quote, one would expect law enforcement during a briefing would be very careful to state what facts are verifiable and which ones are not. It added, Uvalde itself has paid a terrible price as it has waited for the truth and waited through the shaky narrative given instead. Ultimately, the fullest and most accurate truth about what happened at Robb Elementary School will likely come from footage much like this. Body camera videos showing how those officers did and did not respond. But as officials in both Uvalde and here in Austin, including the Texas DPS, fight the release of more information, it could take months or longer for the public and the grieving families to have the most honest, accurate account of that terrible day at Robb Elementary. For the KVU Defenders, I'm Tony Plahetsky, KVU News. Tony, thank you. And to hear more about how this narrative changed so drastically, you can find our full interview with DPS Director Steve McCraw on KVU.com, our YouTube page, and KVU Plus, available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV.